So for those of you who missed it, Kanye West tweeted that he's going, quote, death con three on Jewish people. Um, and to follow up, we have an additional story that's even uh, even worse. So this is from Forbes. Kanye's troubles deepen. XTMZ staffer says star praised Hitler on podcast kills interview. So uh, new allegations about Kanye West's history of anti-Semitic remarks surfaced amid a cascade of recent statements from the rapper about Jews, with a former TMZ staffer claiming that West said he loved Hitler and Nazis back in 2018 on a visit to the news company's studio. Now, that's all that will go into this article here. But I just want to point out that Charlemagne the God on, I, I think it was Monday, he said... You know, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Kanye praised Hitler or something like that. And here, just days later, Charlemagne is uh, proven correct. Yeah. Um, so you haven't talked about this on your show. What are your thoughts on this? Because I think he is um, off his rocker. <laughs> yeah, I feel I mean, I feel almost uncomfortable talking about it because I don't mean like with you. I just mean mm -hmm. in general, because he just seems unwell. Right. So, you know, it's almost like the political analysis. I mean, what he's saying is obviously awful. Yeah. But the question is kind of like where, um, uh, I, I don't know. It's a good question. Like, how are we supposed to, to respond to this stuff? And, you know, there's where, where does like mental health start and personal responsibility start or mm. politics start and the other things stop? It's like kind of uncomfortable. I'm not sure where where it is. I mean, I think we can definitely condemn the ideas and the thoughts mm -hmm. that are obviously anti-Semitic. Um, but he also just seems very unwell. Yeah. And it's I think that's a really important point. He's despite the fact that he is demonstrably unwell, it's it's so it's so wrong the way that conservatives are taking him and exploiting him. Individuals like Tucker right. Carlson, yeah. you know, bring him on their platforms and letting him air his ridiculous views. My my view on this is kind of um, that I don't believe that he gets to use his bipolar as an excuse for terrible and anti-Semitic things. Because there are so many people like I have a member of my family who has bipolar and I know um, people who are bipolar. And none of them say horrible things like this. So one thing that I've kind of let myself um, or I've given myself permission to do is criticize him because even if he is visibly bipolar and he's maybe the most known bipolar person, there are so many working class bipolar people who aren't celebrities who if they said something like this, they would never get a pass. So I've kind yeah. of like broken down that barrier. I sound like Hillary Clinton in my mind just so I can allow myself to criticize right. him because I, I kind of, and, and part of it was I was a huge fan of Kanye West. I had like all of his physical CDs, giant simp for Kanye West. And so once I moved on like away from being a fan, then it was this whole notion of, well, am I a bad person for criti criticizing him because he very clearly is mentally ill. But at the same time, that's almost um, ableist to infantilize him in that right. way because yeah. this is still an adult, right? So it's just, it's so you need somebody in the family to intervene, I feel right. like. But he's uncontrollable. Like, we've seen the way that he doxed his own children effectively. Right. And Kim Kardashian had to get security at the school. And he did this because he presumably wanted his kids to go to Donda University or something. It's just so deranged. And, and now the fact that he's saying right-wing things, the right is using that as, hey, we yeah. have a culture, uh, you know, a cultural icon on our side. It's so gross. It's really gross. I mean, I think it's interesting what you said about how there are working class people who would be immediately canceled for this. But, you know, I feel like sometimes the left can be a little like race to the bottomism on this stuff. Mm. Like, for instance, so, like when a rich person gets off for a crime, like I don't really believe in, in prison as a concept. And I certainly don't believe in it for like nonviolent crimes, let's say. Yeah. And when sometimes like rich people... I understand the left will cheer and want a rich person to go to jail mm -hmm. over like drugs or something. And my thing is like we should be working to free the people in jail more than to put rich people in jail. So mm -hmm. I guess the parallel I'm saying there is like I also wish we had more. I think that when people are mentally ill and saying really problematic things that I think we can condemn what they're saying. But hopefully, like, I do think the goal should be helping the person. I mean, mm -hmm. not to the extent that you let them hurt other people, obviously. Mm -hmm. There are lines there. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that I've been wondering is, like, how do you rehabilitate someone like that? Because 
if this were just a family member, um, you know, we would all talk to that person and say, what you're saying is terrible. What you're saying is hurtful. Here's why you're wrong. But with someone um, who is that powerful, um, you know, he's he's not just wealthy, but he's kind of surrounded himself with yes men who puff up his ego and whatnot. So he's almost untouchable to where any thought that he has that he espouses is, imme- is immediately validated. So the answer is like, how do you even get through to that person? Assuming there's somebody that wants to get through to them. And then the second question is like, how do you get them to stop saying all of these terrible things? Because it's influencing yeah. people. The The thing that yeah. really worried me um, with his tweet to go back to the death con three tweet is the number of people who like that tweet. You know, they just they agree with everything that he says. I think it was like 30,000. Wow. That's really scary. Yeah. Yeah. They just agree with what he says automatically, not necessarily taking into account, you know, uh, deep issues that he has and, and whatnot. And so that's what really worries me, because like you have these people who are they're they're too far gone, but yet they still have so much influence. And I just don't know. And this is kind of an open question. Like, how do we get through to those people and more importantly how do we get through to the people that take everything that those types say at their word because there's so many i mean trump supporters is the biggest example but for you know a non-political example like um kanye west i I just i don't know what to do and i wonder aloud sometimes yeah no i don't know what the answer is either it's like and then there are different issues one is like okay how do you like do you take the person's microphone away that's one issue but then there's just the moral issue Mm -hmm. of like do you can you forgive i i feel like he seems so gone yeah. that like, I don't even like, I, I could imagine him getting on meds and doing therapy and being like, I wasn't myself, mm-hmm. not as a PR move. I'm saying I could imagine that thing happening. And then that's the question of like the culpability, how responsible is that person? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it's different when you're totally in your right mind and not doing it. And then yeah. there are people who would say like, well, you know, in vino veritas, right? Like, but this is different when you're, you know, in wine truth and like people when they're with, will say things when they're drunk and that's their like uninhibited self. That's mm-hmm. different. I think from yeah. being like, I think suffering from a, uh, what can be like a, and I know lots of bipolar people, so I'm not like I'm not generalizing, but I know there is a spectrum and it can be a very debilitating mm-hmm. illness. And so I think that that, yeah, it, it is complicated. I honestly don't know. I don't have like an overall take on this mm-hmm. except to admit that it's complicated. Yeah. And I think that's 100 percent fair, because what do you do with someone yeah. who's very clearly not in the right state of mind? Um, but just is doing demonstrable harm, um, you know, targeting an entire community. Right. And, you know, you think about how hate crimes and anti-Semitism has increased over the years. And then he, with all this influence, makes this statement. And I think that the fact that assuming he misspoke and said death con instead of def con made it like 10 times worse. You know, it just, yeah. oh, God, like, it, it's just it's so bad. And yeah, one positive thing that I will say um, to give the right credit, which I don't like to do, but I'm not a hack, so I do it, is that there were right wingers who were like, okay, no, like, yeah, we get that what you're on our side, like I'm paraphrasing, we get that you're on our side, but this is not okay. Ben Shapiro, got to give him credit, condemn this, you know, um, some Fox News hosts, once they saw what he said, they were like, okay, can't really defend that. Uh, but Candace right. Owens, like, she's the one who proved that she's the true hack because she's like, oh, well, what he said doesn't make sense, but to think that it's anti-Semitic, you're not being a serious person. It's like, oh, that's that's, that's how insane. you know who the hacks are, right? right? Because if I said something wow, like when that, you're like, you would out, condemn when, me. When, like, you make Ben Shapiro look like a remotely honest, smart person, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. quite the feat, Candace Owens, yeah. Yeah, and, and as much as the left, like, fights... I think that we're pretty honest to where if one of us fucked up that bad, we would just be like, okay, I support this person. Maybe their intentions are, are, are altruistic, but that was not a good take. I just feel like that's, that's right. such a level of partisan hackery that's almost um, – it's it, it's so bad that I don't even know how to describe it. Like she well, should never be, be taken seriously To be again. fair to uh, Candace Owens, of course, she famously said that Hitler's only mistake was going global. Oh, when he that's kept true. it local, oh, right? When it was farm-to-table Nazism, that was fine. It's when he, oh. he branched out and globalized it. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. God, that's so, that's so bad. Okay, yeah. that explains actually why she, uh, she made yeah. that comment. 